Alrighty, welcome to uh, Latin 7 for Wednesday, the 29th of September. Hope you're all staying well. Look forward to seeing you in person soon. Um, for now, uh, let's begin as we always do with the prayer. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Salve. So I asked you to go through sentence number 29 on this um, sheet, which we have in front of us here. And uh, what I'd like to do is just work through a couple. Now, um, because uh, this video is recorded already, uh, you're obviously going to be able to go back through any part or skip forward to any part. Um, but uh, it's important that you show your work and it's important that you understand what you translate, because even if you skip forward and copy down all the work, um, you're probably not going to be able to do that on a test or a quiz. So I would like you to sort of work through, uh, since you should have this done for homework already, work through uh, the portions that I assigned for each day uh, before you watch the video, just like you would complete your homework before class, and then bring in what questions you have. Uh, of course, if you have any specific question, you can always email me, but I hope to address kind of the main concerns or the main difficulties that we would have um, together in this video. So please, um, it's sort of on your honor, but uh, it, I'll definitely be able to tell uh, <laughs> reflecting on your grade um, on the quiz or on the test uh, if you have been practicing or if you have just been showing um, the work of your practicing but not actually uh, thinking about it and using your dictionary. So um, that's what I want uh, from you on this homework is to use your brain, to use your Latin knowledge, to use your dictionary, and ask questions. Because uh, when it comes um, to assessing our learning in a quiz or a test, then um, the, kind, the time for that is sort of past. Okay, enough of this, and let's jump in. So number 12, you'll notice that the numbering stays the same uh, throughout all these sheets. So uh, number 12 is the 12th sentence. And the reason for this is because then by the end of the year, you can see how many thousands of sentences we did, not because, you know, that's any number to worry about, but to look at all the great work we've done. So 12 is just a reminder that we're not starting over every time and that this builds and um, you'll see that I've included the verse numbers now um, for us to see uh, that we're reading from sacred scripture. Okay, so populus meus s. So s is my verb, right? s comes from sum. Okay. And Here we go. So sum is our verb. Uh, then we want to know our subject. Populus and meus have to go together uh, because they are both nominative singular. All right. And populus, uh, you'll know, is a noun which we see in this common expression from the Romans, S-P-Q-R. The P is the populus. Okay. So populus, meus, S, obviously the... Uh, interlocutor here is God, the person speaking is God, and you is speaking about these people here. Okay, this is a common expression in the Old Testament. I will be your God, Deus Vester Ero, first person plural, future of Sum. I will be your God, and Populus Meus S, or Populus Meus Eris. Here, populus meus. So I will be your God and you will be my people, right? Just like that. Okay, number two, number 12 is pretty straightforward. So let's go to number 13. Benedictus Deus excelsus. We had some questions about what benedictus means. Um, benedictus, uh, you hear in the Sanctus, right? Benedictus qui venit in nomine domini. So that one you can figure out, but it's also the name of a saint, right? Here it doesn't mean Benedict. It means the meaning of his name. And then Deus excelsus, they all go together here. So there's got to be a verb inferred here, an implied verb. And we know that we always infer uh, if we have to, if there's no verb, 
we infer part of the verb sum. So we have benedictus deus excelsus. So blank, blank, blank. We know deus means God. So this is all nominative singular. And then we have to ask ourselves, am I the God? Are you the God? Are we the God? Are they the God? Okay, it can't be they, right? Because we have a singular now. So we have to infer which form of the verb sum we're going to add in. Benedictus Deus Excelsus. I would write in S. That's what I would do. Okay, so take some time. See what you can do with that one. This one is straight out of the Sanctus, right? Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus. Here we put Sabaot. Sometimes this word is not actually a Latin word. This is a word originally from Hebrew, and we just keep the ending. That's why we don't recognize this oat ending, because it's not a Latin ending. It doesn't come from any of our Latin words. Sabaot means of hosts. What do we mean by hosts? People who throw parties? No. A host is like the heavenly host, like a large uh, mass of angels. So he's the lord of the armies of angels. So that's what we mean when we say sabaot. Okay. Again, there's an implied form of the verb sum here. Unus es magister vester. Um, we know that magister and vester go together. Vester is that possessive adjective, which means your alls, or as we all love to say, yees. Okay. One is your, now we know magister, if it's like me, Magister means teacher, but <laughs> obviously I'm not your master in the way that the man speaking in this book is. So we have to maybe translate it a little differently. Um, now in number 16, we have from the epistle to the Galatians. This is St. Paul writing. And by the way, pretty cool that we're reading St. Matthew and St. Paul in their own words here. We're not reading a translation. We're reading the words they wrote in the Latin Bible. So that's a pretty cool thing that we're doing, not just reading stuff out of a textbook, but reading real live Latin. Non est judeus neque grecus. Neque is like neck, and it means neither or neither, whichever you say. So these two things we see are in the same case, and they're adjectives, right? They look like us, ah, uh, um. Grecus is easy enough. Eudeus, we know that the J and the I are sort of uh, interchangeable in Latin. So we get this word, Eudeus, and we hear about Judea in the Gospels. Oops, Judea. And this is where we get our word Jew. So Eudeus means a Jew. In fact, if you look at a crucifix, if you look at a well-done crucifix, you'll see this I and R I, Jesus, Nazarenus, Rex, U de Orum. This is that word that we see here in number sixteen. These two are adjectives. This is a nominative singular restating who this guy is. He's the king, and who is he? The king of genitive plural, right? Orum, genitive plural, eudeorum, okay? And the scriptures tell us that this was written in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew for everyone to read. So these words or these letters would have been written at the top of the cross. Okay, we have a similar sort of construction in number 17, so I'm not going to spend very much time on that. You can see that they're actually from the same verse. So St. Paul's on kind of a tangent here. He says there's no Jew, there's no Greek. There's no this, there's no that. Okay, Lieber here is an adjective. It does not mean book. Okay, he's not anti-book. Number 18. I'm going to skip over number 18 because number 18 is pretty straightforward. Number 19, we already discussed, or we at least already discussed what's being covered there. Number 20 is a little tougher, not because of the difficult words, but because we have no verb, we're going to infer est here. And we know tu us, a um, means your. 
but when it's separated from the thing it's describing, it can mean yours. Yours, domine. Domine, dominus, we know, means lord. Domine, it kind of gives us the sense of, oh, lord. It's like something you'd say in a prayer or when you need help. It's a special way of changing the ending on the word to mean you're addressing someone. So if we have a man named Matthäus, and we know that Matthäus ends in us just like dominus, and dominus goes to domine. If we want to say, oh, Matthew, why are you doing that? What are you writing? We say, oh, Matthäus, just like this. It's an E here. Matthäus, just like we said domine. So this is a way of kind of putting that O. And because we have an ending, we don't necessarily need the O. But in English, we like to add it. Okay. Usque quo is a, road, a word I wrote on the board uh, two days ago. And usque quo may not be in your dictionary. It's kind of a newer word in Latin. New, <laughs> anyway, more than a thousand years old. And it means how long? Like how long will we have to be watching these videos? <laughs> Very good. Okay, how long? How long? Oh, Lord. Right, just did that one for you. We're going to skip down. Number 25, we already know from the mass, right? Okay. Number 26, there were some questions about vere. One way that we can make an adjective into an adverb in Latin is by adding this a. So we take verus, which you can find in your dictionary, verus a um, which means true. And we can get rid of the us and add an e and make it vere. And this has the same effect as like adding the ly. Ly here, truly. So we have true, truly. Uh, what's another one we can do? We can say fortis, strong, courageous. We chop off our is and we say forte, strongly, right? We do something strongly. Or we can say ager. Sick. Okay. We can say AJ, sickly. There's another way to do this, which is probably more correct, but we will uh, cover that in a later lesson, probably. For now, you can know that taking an us, ah, uh, um adjective, you can change it into an adverb, adverb, by making it ly, kind of in English, or that. A in Latin. Okay, so truly, be used A, yes. Bene. Estis templum de vivi. De vivi. These are in the same case and number. Vestrum est regnum de. Verum domini verum est. Alrighty. So that was the homework for today. Um, what I'd like you to do for Thursday, please, is to finish up to, shall we say, let's say do the whole thing, okay? So for Thursday, please do 30 through 43. The sheet is one you should already have. If you don't, please send me an email and I will send you one. Or if you don't have printer uh, access, then I will print one off and I can somehow arrange for it to be left in the office for you. Okay, so you definitely should have sentences 30 through 43 uh, completed for Friday. Now, uh, excuse me, for Thursday. So please finish the sheet for Thursday. I want to talk about sempiternum. Sempiternum is a combination of two words, semper and aeternus. Now, eternus looks like eternal. We can say eternal, right? Goes forever. If we wanted to say eternally, by the way, eterne, right? We just lop off the us, we add our e, eterne. Now, semper means always. So the word we're getting is something like always forever. And a nice kind of English way of saying this is everlasting. Everlasting. Okay. And it's an adjective, right? Um because it's got to go with something neuter. This in sempiternum phrase 
just kind of means everlastingly or forever, which is how long this video is lasting, right? Forever. Okay, so you're going to see that forever. Literally, you're going to see it a lot in sempiternum, in aeternum. Okay. What else do we want to say? Day. Watch out. Day doesn't mean of. Day never means of in Latin, at least not um, in anything we'll see probably. Day means regarding or about. It's a preposition, so we have to use what case? The ablative, the ablative case. And here my verb is you all, right? So we might have to go with something like of, but it doesn't mean of like the genitive case. It means we're not about something. We're not regarding something. It's not our concern, right? Okay. Longe is a word for your dictionary. Longe looks like long, and it means something like long. Okay. Good. In the last couple minutes here, I want to say something about number 39. Number 39 is tricky because we have a plural verb. So it means our subject has to be plural. Has to be plural. Okay. So careful on that. Stoltus. It's kind of a silly word we like to see. <laughs> so number 48 is kind of a silly sentence. Stultorum infinitus est numerus. There's an infinite number of, I'll let you figure out. Okay. Remember the genitive plurals here. And that should get you through for the homework. Again, this is Wednesday, the 29th of September. And I would like you to finish these, please, for Thursday. So this portion for Thursday. If you have questions, please send me an email. Uh, I will be happy to answer your questions. Otherwise, we will um, have the homework for Thursday, and we'll talk about some of the more difficult points there. All right.